had 4.184 joules of radiant energy, i.e., uh, energy um, coming from light from the sun, uh, hitting uh, one gram of water or uh, one gram of iron, you would find that those small amounts of um, substances would change temperatures quite differently. Uh, the water would go up by only one degree Celsius and the iron would go up almost 10 times as much, 9.42 degrees Celsius. So uh, why do these two um, same amounts of matter but uh, different substances change temperature so differently? Well, uh, they have different uh, specific heats or a number of joules required for one gram of that substance to increase by one degree Celsius. Uh, the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram, deg gram degree Celsius, whereas uh, the specific heat of iron is much less at 0.444 joules per gram degree Celsius. And so uh, because water has such a high specific heat, uh, it does not change temperature easily. Um, so for example, if you were to uh, pour boiling uh, water on my, on my skin, it would release a lot of energy um, before it cooled down to the same temperature as the rest of my body. Um, but uh, iron, if it were at the same temperature, um, it would not release as much energy to my skin uh, because it can change temperature easily. It could fall to my temperature um, quite easily. Um, iron and many, many metals, they, they change temperature easily because they have low specific heat. Um, and so uh, we can actually um, kind of calculate what these changes of temperature could have been uh, from what we know about these substances uh, using this very important equation. Uh, here we go, Q is equal to ms delta T. So uh, Q is going to be heat or enthalpy. Um, it will be measured in joules. Mass uh, is M, that's in grams. S is our specific heat, which is joules per gram degree Celsius. And delta T, that's change in temperature, uh, and that is in degrees Celsius. Um, we have all our units arranged so that uh, they can cancel each other out. So for example, uh, because specific heat is measured in joules per gram degree Celsius, our change in temperature needs to be Celsius, et cetera. And so uh, we can use these two equations to calculate what the changes in temperature of water or, or iron would be. Uh, water, um, rearranged to find delta T. Um, delta T is equal to Q over MS. Water, its change in temperature is Q over MS. It's um, 4.184 joules per, or over one gram, over uh, the specific heat, 4.184 joules over degrees Celsius. What units should be left over after we calculate here? Uh, grams is on top and bottom here. Joules is on top and bottom. One over one over degree Celsius or uh, degree Celsius should be our delta T. Um, and, and we get that um, 1.00 degrees Celsius. Uh, whereas uh, with the change in temperature of iron, because it has such a small specific heat, uh, it's able to change a lot of uh, joules, um, it, it changes temperature easily. So it, uh, actually a lot of uh, degrees Celsius, it changes temperature easily. That is, um, for a given amount of, um, of, of heat added and, and substance, uh, the temperature would rise a lot. Um, so uh, it was 9.44 degrees Celsius. So that's just an introduction to this uh, equation. You'll use it more. So uh, you'll also see up here that uh, if you were to add that same amount of joules of heat, 4.184 joules, to 10 grams of water inside an enclosed container, the temperature of that water would only go up 0.1 degree Celsius. Whereas before we had one gram of water and it went up one degree Celsius, having 10 times as much water being heated, uh, its temperature rises 10 times less, just 0.1 degree Celsius. Because the more substance you have, the less temperature uh, change you'll have. Uh, there's more material to absorb that heat before temperature changes significantly. Um, so uh, we know this is specifically water in here, but uh, we can use this 
and the container within or uh, enclosing it um, to describe uh, heat capacity. So heat capacity is the number of joules for an entire material, i.e. all 10 grams of substance, to increase by 1 degree Celsius. So um, it's the number of joules per 1 degree Celsius. It's joules per degree Celsius. That's the unit. Now, most typically we'll use heat capacity for heterogeneous materials, um, most often uh, for calorimeters, uh, because some calorimeters, for example, are composed of many different metals or many different types of substance. There are many different um, specific heats. Uh, specific heats are for specific substances, uh, i.e. elements or compounds, but if you have a mixture of different substances, then you'll probably use heat capacity. Um, and so we can uh, say that the heat um, is equal to uh, the heat capacity times the change in temperature. Uh, or uh, the heat capacity is equal to uh, heat over change in temperature. Remember, it's uh, joules per uh, degree Celsius. Um, but we also know that uh, heat is equal to ms delta T. And so uh, we can find, because the rest of these equations are the same, we can use an algebra and find that uh, heat capacity is equal to um, mass times specific heat if you have a, a pure substance, i.e. just one substance like, say, water. So uh, what's, the, uh, what's the heat capacity of those 10 grams of water with um, the container holding no um, heat, uh, absorbing no heat? Um, so there's two ways you can find this. Uh, you, can know, you can find it knowing the uh, mass and the uh, specific heat of water. Uh, you would just say, oh, you have 10 grams of water, and you know the specific heat of specifically water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Or uh, you can use an experiment to find uh, the heat capacity. So if you know exactly how many joules of heat were absorbed, and you know exactly the change in temperature of that calorimeter, then you can know the heat capacity of that calorimeter or, or entire material. It's, uh, it's here, it's uh, 4.184 joules of heat were uh, uh, released and the change in temperature, actually absorbed and the change in temperature uh, was 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. In both of these cases, you should find that uh, the, the heat capacity is 41.8 for joules per degree Celsius. Um, and so we are going to do some problems using this method, but uh, we're also going to do a lab and some problems in the homework, which require you to experimentally determine uh, the heat capacity. So find how many joules of heat are absorbed or released and the resulting change in temperature from that. All right, uh, there's another one of these you need to watch uh, more in calorimetry next.